my name is Dmitry. I'm not representing any organization since I'm going to talk uh, some provocative statements about education and learning process. That's why I put here not Okay, that's why I put here versus not and. Uh, yes. And I really think that uh, education and learning now in 21st century are fighting because. What will happen at the end of this fight, it's really hard to predict. So just a few words about myself. Uh, yes, I committed some efforts into Agile Latvia and Latvian developer, Developers Network, but currently I'm away from all the activities. I'm just kind of guest lecturer. Uh, I'm working as a software developer for 16 years. And uh, I have finished school uh, 21 years ago. And uh, then I started my education process as a student. And uh, now I want to explain a bit why I think it's important to share my thoughts. Because uh, when I started, My studies, uh, there was a completely different world around. So, could you raise the hands who has uh, wristwatches along with you? Okay, like uh, uh, excluding girls, it will be like 10%. Why excluding? Because for girls it's accessory, not a necessity. <laughs> When I started in the university, everyone had wristwatches. But how many of you has a mobile phone? Raise your hands. <laughs> everyone. So when I started, nobody had a mobile phone in the university, even a rector. <laughs> so, so you can imagine how dramatically world around the university has changed but inside of it after 20 years I can see that the same people uh, using the same courses uh, keep teaching students something changing but kind of very slow and uh, it's not only about local universities I had a talk in Finland and uh, one of the brightest uh, Finnish minds, uh, Vasco Duarte, his brilliant mind from Portugal moved to Finland. So, and he has agreed that uh, universities are behind the IT industry for 10 or 15 years. They're back. They're delaying. <laughs> So that's why I think it's kind of important to talk about and think about what is uh, education and what is learning in modern world. After working such a long time in IT, I has participated in uh, hundreds of job interviews and I found the really interesting patterns in what people are answering. So I started to experiment, to do my own experiments. I have uh, three kids so I do experiments with learning and with education a lot. Uh, and I just combined what I see and what I get within my experiments. And, uh, sorry, um, 
well today. So I need to refresh a bit myself. So, and when I see the results of standard education, I really don't like it. Because very few people coming out of university know what they want to achieve. Most of the people just want to get a job. And then they suppose they will have, get some experience and then something else. But they don't know yet what they really will get. Once we had a job interview with a lovely girl who was applying for a testing engineer position and I asked a kind of standard question what you will be interested to do after one year of this position and she made a big eyes and asked me back one year? I do not suppose to work here one year Next, uh, next year in university we will have a C++ course, I will learn programming and will start learning the program. So she just had a real goal behind all those courses. Uh, another example of this was uh, I was interviewing one guy who finished uh, university in UK and his major motivation behind the studies was that his parents sent him there. Uh, and I guess that uh, he, his parents also sent him to a job interview <laughs> in the company I was working for. Actually, it was Citico. Uh, and when I asked the guy, what did you like to, during your course in this university? And he named a few subjects, and when I started to ask him, him about the subject, he didn't remember, because he liked it, but he didn't learn anything there. Uh, then I asked him, like, come on, what did you do for two years in UK? And he told me nothing. Uh, most probably because his parents uh, didn't tell him what to do. <laughs> so, uh, and I think that our perception of education is really, really contaminated with the pressure of our parents, of employers, of our environment. So we need to go a bit deeper and uh, examine what really education is and what really learning is. Uh, it's a bit lack of brightness here, but I think you can guess what those beasts are. Uh, they look very scary, but I think somewhere at the beginning of the human history they were really well combined but after that during uh, the development of uh, western civilization they was growing apart one from each other and I want to talk how it was. So, the <coughs> education is a process of preparation some immature per person or being or creature to outer world within some specific society. For instance, it happens not only in human society because uh, Lion prides or wolves, uh, they are preparing their youngsters too. And in the same way, they give a safe environment where youngsters can play, can experiment. And on the other hand, they 
shows them examples how to behave in different situations and how to survive in the outer world. And time by time they are lowering uh, protection boundaries, they are giving more freedom to youngsters until they will be able to reproduce uh, behavior of the mature individuals. That's how I understand education, initial set of edu education. And uh, learning is a bit opposite, because education is uh, what society puts into individual, and learning is uh, what individual want to find about surrounding nature and uh, what he or she will do to get this knowledge. So the learning is a very natural process which sparks with the curiosity. If you are curious, you will learn about subject of your curiosity by yourself. You will find everything you need to learn uh, to help you to learn. And uh, finally, this boy will do whatever he wants with this creature, and he will learn a lot about it. He don't need uh, a professor to tell him. He don't need uh, uh, class around him. He don't need to sit uh, and learn first biology, then microbiology, then uh, chemistry to examine this subject of his interest. So uh, I just put what I've told into quick facts. You can read them. The major difference between education and learning is that education gives you uh, past experiences of the society where you're living and growing. So they give you, they retranslate what your ancestors did to be, to, to survive. And learning is the process when you are experimenting. What can I do without uh, damaging myself with this environment? For, for instance, I put a uh, fork into electrical socket when I was seven and I'm still here, but I learned very quickly that it's not wise thing. So, uh, are they really versus one versus each other? As I told, I believe that yes, uh, our education process uh, corrupts our learning skills and possessions. And what I want to, where I want to go, I want to go a bit back to the roots of modern higher education in Europe. And of course, it's uh, ancient Greece, where at least uh, two higher education uh, universities were known. It's uh, Plato <coughs> Academy, Academy and Aristotle uh, Lyceum. So those two were founded by uh, world, now world famous philosophers who just founded some education facility just to keep spreading their own philosophical views. So the major purpose of them was uh, to grow the new generation of uh, people who view world uh, in the same paradigms, in the same light as the founder. So and after some dark ages when uh, these antique universities were demolished, uh, we've got medieval universities. 
which were two types. First type, the university was subsided by the government, by the king or by the church. And the second type, much more interesting, it's when where uh, students were paying to lecturers and were defining their curriculum, what they want to be taught by those professors. Uh, the purpose of those universities was, <coughs> respectively, to serve uh, uh, to justify uh, government needs. Uh, the second one was just to keep knowledge and develop it further. They had no purpose to spread the knowledge because, for instance, in uh, Britain in 16th century, uh, reading Bible was uh, a crime, and uh, you will be, you would be hanged if you read the Bible by your own, not in university or not in church. So, and in the modern age, everything has was changed because of uh, capitalism, uh, mass production systems. Uh, they were introduced not only in manufacturing, but also in education. The amount of educated people was growing by demand of uh, manufacturing ventures, because because there were Some demands, yeah. The demands were there. So, in the modern day, ah, just want to mention that uh, the time people spent in universities was quite long in a, in ancient Greece. Uh, a bit shorter in medieval time, but again, some people was able to spend in university for 20 years and so on. But in modern age, it reduced to six, seven years because it's really it became really expensive to grow a specialist for such a long period. Okay, in present day, we have plenty of universities because uh, uh, all the physical work were moved to southeastern Asia where un uneducated people are assembling your iPhones and here we need to develop some application for those iPhones so uh, <coughs> we need to get education as fast as possible because modern economy dictates that so as you can see the time of uh, higher of getting higher education reduced uh, reducing every century and i want to compare starting from medieval ages Preparation for life by made for applied on a student or and applied on a knight, noble knight. So they were starting a different age, but uh, the process of education took for both of them like ten from ten to 15, twelve years, and after that, knight was able to command troops to go and attack the enemy and the student were able to function in a court or to do his duties on a king's serving and so on. So, and since the process of training was quite expensive, they cannot, uh, and the result of poor training can lead to serious damage to employer or to himself, there were no such thing as uh, shortcuts. 
like learn to be a knight in 21 days. So first day it's horseback riding, second it's uh, fencing, and third day some uh, troops commanding. So they committed half of their life, active life, to learning to do something, and then probably the rest of their lives they were doing. But in modern day, let's compare what happens in education and in, uh, say, fighting troops, modern knights, and so on. Uh, in higher education, we still spend from three to six, seven years, but in I would say most elite uh, army troops in the world, US Marines, you spend on preparation just 12 weeks of doing this, then uh, 59 days of uh, infantry training and the uh, final course is just 29 days. After that, you will become a soldier, which will uh, operate most uh, complex weapon and fight in most remote locations and so on. But now my question is why? Why they could become a good soldiers in just uh, six months and we, IT engineers, need to learn a lot of things which we will not use after that and spend three or four or five years of our life doing that. I think it's because of the paradigm of modern education itself. When, uh, okay, when the Plato has established his academy, he had not that much of uh, real knowledge to share. You can read all his works within a week. With modern education, you will read 12 years what different universities are prepared for IT students, and you still will be in the middle of reading. So what, by the way, it's uh, really how uh, in France they <coughs> saw education in our days 100 years ago. So magic box, they dropping some books in there and uh, content from the book going into your mind. And I think it's real what's happening now because a lot of courses which I took in university were use useless, but somehow I do remember something from there and uh, I don't think that this time was spent right because I could do more programming during that time. But nobody asked me what I want to do. And since uh, there was a demand that I should sit on a lecture and to listen lecture, I was just sleeping there. Yes, it's a kind of domestic experience in one of local university when a lecturer just reading uh, his papers from his briefcase. Uh, you can imagine what kind, what kind of uh, knowledge you can get on this course. Perhaps uh, you will learn how his briefcase is looked. But not the content. Actually, I've got the same lecturer when I was a student, and he was doing, uh, he was writing on the blackboard that time, but uh, he, is he was covering his writings by his back, so 
we have get any better experience there. So, and I think that major goal of the education is just to give you a lot of knowledge. But it's not a knowledge you are gaining in the process of doing something. It's just a knowledge that somebody has chosen for you and thought that you should learn this and this and this and this. And now we are going, why those people knew better than you what you need to learn? Once I was inter I did an interview with a guy who was big proponent of object-oriented programming. And when I asked him, man, why do you think it's the best approach? Uh, he told me the brilliant thing, because the lecturer told us. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here is a lecturer, he gives you uh, 10 commandments, and then you will, or three commandments in case of uh, object-oriented programming. And then you will go your entire life with this three commandments. But people could be wrong. And when you're sitting in university, you need to remember it uh, very well. I'm going to tell you about one interesting story. Do you know who this guy is? No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> In the middle of 19th century, there was a very weird and uh, very bad situation with the giving birth to children in a hospital in Europe. Because a young mother, after giving a birth, were dying not one in a thousand like it happens now. It was a much higher percentage, like uh, from 50 to 18 percent. Sometimes in some good years it was <coughs> 5 percent. So, you can imagine almost half, one third of women giving birth most probably would die in the hospital. And uh, one man, this man, Ignaz Zemmelweis, he started to do an experiment. What can prevent this uh, sepsis and why women are dying? So, the root cause of this problem was, of course, when young doctors were practicing in an anatomical theater with a corpse, learning how the human body is built, uh, they were going to help uh, with giving birth, uh, just uh, not washing their hands, just making it like this, after digging in a corpse, and then, of course, the sepsis from a corpse contaminates also women. So, and he started to experiment. For one year uh, after his experiment, they used uh, alkaline salt uh, as an antiseptic solution. They lowered the percentage of death from 18% to 2%. So, big win, yes? But nobody in Europe accept, has accepted his solution because the lack of theoretical background behind this. So a lot of professors told it can't be, it's anti-scientific. So we will keep putting sepsis into women, they will keep dying, uh, but without uh, any scientific proof uh, we wouldn't accept this practice. Only one man dared to try it without scientific proof. In uh, Hamburg or Berlin hospital 
And after that, he just found out that it works. He realized how many people, how many women he killed, and he committed a suicide. And what happened then? For 18 or 20 years, people keep, kept the practice of not washing hands, or, or washing hands with just ordinary soap, and uh, women kept dying. Only when scientific proof that there are such things as, as bacteria has arrived, people started to wa wash hands with antiseptic. A uh, very good example in this story is that in England, once this, this guy has populated his results, they started to use the same techniques of antiseptic just without any scientific proof. Because they tried, it was working, and they keep using it. Actually, this guy has died before the Europe has accepted his uh, approach. So only 50 years after, in Budapest, they, the people has built this statue. So, uh, the idea is that any authority could be wrong, and if something is working for you, it's much better than wait, uh, sit and wait uh, until the higher authority will allow you or will tell you what to do and how to do. So, and then we are moving to a bit different subject, environments. So, I found the best environment for learning in this picture, it's the sandbox, the best metaphor. You can build there everything you want. You can freely communicate with other builders. You can share your experiences. You can fail there very safely. You can jump on your construction. Your construction may fall on you, and you won't uh, be, be suffered. So it's very natural and it's very productive environment for learning. I found uh, almost the same looking environment which represents our educational system. Yeah, it's a uh, lonely guy who has uh, some toys, but have no uh, communications. He locked in his cell, and he's able to only play with himself, and maybe if he would attract somebody, then some, this somebody will play with him. So, what really he could learn there? Any ideas? That's my point. How is it? <laughs> uh, there are two approaches. Uh, first one is uh, practice in university. Uh, first, he needs to learn how to work. Then, he needs to learn the things he shouldn't touch. For instance, uh, plasma TV, don't touch it. Uh, don't open windows, don't do anything which might uh, up upset your parents, then you'll be free to walk around your flat. Second one, just, uh, I think it's a more religious approach, just to uh, improve your karma and you'll be reincarnating in a good environment. So, Fortunately, we are a bit mature than this boy, and we can choose what to do and where to do. So we, that's why I'm offering to choose very carefully where we are spending our time when we want to learn something. Do we really 
need to sit in a cage for four years after we could try to build our own web server or our own database or our own uh, Android application. Do we really need to learn uh, a lot of mathematics, physics and so on? Imagine, for instance, what if before those guys started to build the sand towers, first they need to learn uh, math, then physics, then chemistry of sand. Uh, they need to provide uh, calculations and uh, blueprint of this tower to their parents. Then only if parents accept this blueprint, they will be able to build something. How many years they could spend drawing something? on the paper instead of real experience. But when they are brought into this sand pool, they will build their first tower instantly, after a few hours. And then, if their tower will be bad, it, fall, it will fall, but they will learn something. This guy, he will learn something about uh, depriving of communications, and uh, about how sad life is. Uh, have you seen a Leon movie where Jean Reno and uh, Natalie Portman were playing? So she was asking him, uh, is life always this hard or it's just when you're a kid? And do you remember what he's answered? Somebody. It's not at all new. It's answered. It's always like that. See? It's a modern office. I was working in a kind of similar one. It's built exactly like an environment in educational facilities. So people are separated from each other. They from one side, from another side, they have no private spaces because uh, at any moment anyone could in interrupt you, ask a question, and so on. So, and uh, still, I was surprised, but still, many managers think that such environments are productive. But it's not that bad, thanks to. Google or other companies. So there are really good companies, even in Riga, where environment built more like a productive one, where people can freely communicate without interrupting other workers, could have some fun, not only just typing from their PCs eight hours a day. So the corporate world a bit turning into human direction but I think education still behind that process for 10 or 50 years uh, yes that's a bit not very good quality of picture that's a art class which is more like a coding retreat what Alexei was talking about, where people not learning the theory, but they drawing by themselves. So it's the best way to learn to draw, not to go, not to attend lectures about history of drawing, about the concepts of how Vincent van Gogh was drawing his picture or somebody else was drawing his pictures but just sit and draw and you will learn much faster to express yourself instead of sitting in the, on the boring lectures and hearing about how other has drawn some great pictures I think it's the end sorry if my talk was a bit uh, unconscious some
places, but I hope you will get the idea what I was talking about. Any questions? May I be a first in your introduction about have you even an error worked in education? No. Oh, so so you criticized it from outside, but you've never been inside it. Uh, actually, I'm evaluating the results of our educational system since. No I have another question. Um, <coughs> For my university first course, human resource course, I remember <coughs> this one uh, very interesting idea that um, education or learning together uh, for every person consists of three parts. Uh, the formal learning, the non-formal learning, and the uh, informal learning, where the formal part is what you get in your university school, you know, the standardized stuff that you teach you basics. The non-formal being the um, well, at conferences, for example, workshops, seminars, stuff that you sort of learn, but sort of in a non-formal way. And the informal part being the, the job part. And each one constitutes one third of your whole thing that, that makes you who you are, your education. What is your opinion on, on this approach? Would you agree that both uh, education, non-formal education, and working experience would both would all be sort of equal and all important. They are important, but it's better to have a person which has no formal education but has a great passion in his subject than good educated people who is indifferent of what he is doing. I've got, uh, I, I know a guy who has no formal education in IT at all. He learned everything he learned. It was done sitting by PC and programming and reading and so on. And right now he is one of the most successful, uh, at least in ex-USSR companies uh, which developing uh, social games. I guess he's a mil millionaire al already. So. Just because he was sitting and programming, programming, programming. Um, about the learning thing, um, do you think it is? It makes sense to do everything alone and try and fail over and over again if you know that hundreds of people have done it before you and documented it. Isn't it easier just to? take a look at someone who failed before you and learn from him than to waste time to try to fail yourself and then learn from your mistakes. Uh, I agree that millions of people have failed before, but uh, you do not get any experience in their failures. You just take in their experiences some granted knowledge. So taking the, their experience as a, some predefined knowledge, you need to build your own experiences. Excuse me, and does your, do you think, I don't need to, to read Pushkin, I know, don't need to listen music, because it doesn't help me to program something, to uh, be a good programmer? Excuse me, is there any Pushkin or music in IT curriculum in Latvian universities? But education is not one, only one point. Education, uh, education doesn't learn you. Education does give you gives you possibility to learn. Yes. And education to be no able doesn't to, to, to teach you. Yes, yes, yes. But to be able to read Pushkin, you don't need to go to university. You just need to learn how to read. And even worse, to listen music, you don't need to be taught how to listen music. You just need to listen it. It's so bordered. Why? It also tells you about a very broad area of things. And a lot of those things maybe you would never even hear about yourself. Yes? So how would you be able to learn something if you don't even know that that exists? Uh, actually, it happens to me every day when I'm bumping into some problem which I haven't heard before. 
I'm going to Google for it. And as this guy already told, millions of people has failed with this problem and solved it. So you think Googling is the best solution? I think to study better to spend 15 minutes to find the solution for the problem you're really facing than two years for learning how uh, people in the past solved a solution, solved problem which you will never met. Are there any yeah. okay, me tell me. Um, the thing with the formal education is that there is a study plan for three, four, maybe five years to pass in the program, and uh, it, you go through maybe not so deeply, but through very wide, uh, very few topics. When you are doing it yourself, you have to fill all the gaps. Like you said, if you, you, you get a problem, you might Google it. But at the same time, if you are do, doing something in course, you won't, you will never look for it so, like other way to do it. Unless it doesn't work. Yeah. How to, how to, to I mean, you are like several, as you said, tutorials and books, or, or just trying to program something. How to fill in the gaps with the, with the knowledge, which, is, which might be just more efficient, not, not the good things about universities, yes, there are some good things, I just left them away from my presentation. So, the good thing is that in university you have a kind of environment where everyone is interested, almost everyone is interested in the same topic. So, there you can discuss the problem. Uh, now, at the age of social networks and so on, there are a much more productive environments in the internet where you can discuss any topics of your interest and fill any gaps uh, and uh, not only discuss so many universities uh, publishing their courses like Stanford or Ber Berkeley they are publishing their courses and if you really interesting interested in any subject you can do this course and go through it, just checking, is there any gaps in your understanding of this subject? 